Okay, it says we are live. Fred, I am so happy to have you here <laughs> after our little glitch last week, but um, I'm really looking forward to having you have a detailed description and discussion of this slow burn method because so many people ask me questions about it. I talk all the time about how I <laughs> work out twice a week for 30 minutes each time, and I am really so looking forward to getting your input. I also have a couple videos of myself that I'm going to put up here for you to critique. And um, if you would, um, you know, why don't we just start out with maybe you just give a little introduction and then um, give a demonstration of what this uh, an actual slow burn movement is uh, all about. Sure. Um, well, um, my name is Frederick Kahn, and uh, uh, actually today I was sitting at my desk and I realized that today, June 20th, was the 25th anniversary of, of, of the business. I was like, wow, where did that time go? But um, it, um, it, it's, there's a long story to it, but um, essentially it kind of came out of, I was working as a physical therapy aide at the Hospital for Joint Disease and Sports Medicine Center way back in like 1990 or so. And um, I started learning about this type of training from books that I've read by Dr. Ellington Darden, Arthur Jones, Ken Hutchins, Dr. Ben Bacchicchio, and a bunch of other experts. And I started to use these techniques in all of the rehabilitation, for all the uh, orthopedic rehab patients. <clears throat> and um, the, and uh, long story short, the doctor one day was standing in the window, pointed at me, the guy who ran the orthopedic center, and went like this, said, come here. And he pulled me into his office, and I thought I was getting fired. And he said to me, what are you doing with my patients? And I said, um, trying to make them stronger. And he said to me, I have never seen my patients get this strong this fast. What are you doing? And so that's kind of where it began. And then he and I opened up our own physical therapy clinic at New York Methodist Hospital. And then after a few years of running that facility in 1998, I, I opened this facility. And, and I thought, look, hey, if it's, good for, if it's good for orthopedic patients, why isn't it good for everybody? So I started training everybody using this method. And you know, not only were the results fantastic, but nobody was getting hurt ever. So um, that's sort of the short history of how I got into this. Uh, yeah, I, the interesting thing when I looked into this, uh, never getting hurt, never getting injured, be able to work out, lift weights for the rest of your life, injury free. Right. And that really piqued my interest because I have some women in their 70s and 80s even who I have talked into actually joining Planet Fitness and starting this. And so I, I thought to myself, just like how this method is, you are move, doing movements so slowly. How are you possibly going to injure yourself, right? We're not perking and jerking and shifting and, you know, right. so there's no shoulder industry injuries, back in injuries. And uh, I just looked at it that it is, it's such an intense, but compact workout. And for me, that's perfect. I don't want to spend two hours at the gym. I don't want to go to the gym five days a week. <clears throat> I, I really, because that's a surefire straight way to giving up and yeah. not doing it anymore yeah. uh, because then it's like, well, I can't do it the way I'm supposed to do it. I'm not going to do it at all. So I was just so um, really thrilled to feel that I can actually get a really, really good workout, build muscle, not injure myself and not have to spend a lot of time doing it. So yeah, if you could uh, do a demonstration of a, sure. a movement, that would be great. Sure. And I just want before I do the demo, I wanted to say that one of the things about uh, this is the difference between um, positive tissue remodeling exercise 
and recreational pastime activities. So when you said the word intense, a lot of people go, oh, no, I don't want to do anything intense. I just want to do something fun. I, I want to do what I like to do. But, but the thing is, is that's not the way it works. Uh, the, the human body will not create a positive adaptation, more bone density, more muscle strength, more muscle mass, unless the effort is intense. But that intensity can be delivered safely and time efficiently, as, as you were saying. So, um, but a lot of, especially when I get new clients, I really have to get them to understand the difference between exercise and recreation so that they can do and the stronger you are, the better you'll recreate at anything. So, right. It's going to translate into improved motion, balance for everything, every aspect of the rest of your life. I've actually taken a couple people um, to the gym with me who really wanted me to help start them out on a workout. And I actually had taken somebody who's been a sort of gym rat in the past. And after I put her through your workout, your version of the workout, she was like, wow, do my muscles feel wiped out? I go, yay, that's exactly how you're supposed to feel. Fatigue in the muscle to signal your muscle that it's got to get stronger. So yeah, that, that's, that's it's really it is. As my co-authors, uh, Mary Dan Eads said, uh, slow burn builds you up without beating you up. All right, a demo. So um, right here, I'm standing in front of my uh, front grip pull-down machine, and this machine strengthens the muscles of the back and the arms. And typically what you see in the gym is something like this. You'll see people yanking it down and then just drop it, yanking it, and then just drop it. Instead, and so force equals mass times acceleration. So the greater the force you put into the resistance, the higher, uh, the greater the chance of injury that might occur. So rather than that, using the same resistance, here's the thing, a lot of people think that you, when you're doing slow reps, you have to make the weight light. No, you don't. What's gonna, what you're gonna do is fewer repetitions when you're moving the weight slowly. So as an example, rather than what you just saw me do. But we're we, not counting, we're not counting the reps, right? No, in fact, we just count the time to, what we call time to concentric failure. The time that it takes you to get to the point where you literally could not do another repetition. And that should happen, if the weight is moderate, it should happen between about 60 and 90 seconds. So here we go. So it would look more like this. Three seconds for the first inch, two seconds for the first inch. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And just continue slowly. Hold. And already the same weight to me feels like it's three times as heavy because the tension is being held longer. I know it's like watching water boil, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then once again, when you touch down without resting, you slowly reverse. Same way. My arms are already shaking. Squeeze and hold. And you would continue to do this until the point where you got to say, I'll, show, I'll give you an example. You would start, let's say this is the fourth one. You'd get to here and you can't move it any further. You don't just quit. You keep trying, keep trying, breathing, trying, breathing. And when you realize it ain't going anywhere, slowly reverse and then gently rest. And now, once you've done that, you've done all you have to do on this particular exercise. Now you just move on to the next machine or the next exercise. And so, see, I'm, just from those three repetitions, it puts me out of breath a little bit. Uh, so, um, you can normally get anywhere between six to 10 exercises in about a 30 minute session. And six to 10 exercises will work your whole body. And it's best to work your body as a whole. 
and then rest it as a whole, and then so on and so forth. The, the, the key that I think a lot of people don't know, it's like innocent, they innocently don't understand, that the benefits of productive exercise come when you're not exercising. They come when you're resting and recovering from the exercise. And that's why you only need to do this at most twice a week. Yeah, so I I was struggling with, should I just take two days off, work out again, two days off, work out again, or can I really just do twice a week? You know, is that enough? I would say 50% of my clients, 40 to 50% come once a week. Some come three times in a two-week period. The research on strength training done by Drs. Westcott and Phillips and a bunch of others show that three, three strength training sessions a week seems to work best, but two provide 98% of the benefit of three. So unless you're planning on being a bodybuilder and walking out on stage, two weekly sessions is plenty. And Westcott's research shows that one strength training session a week produces 70% of the benefits of twice. Wow. Right. So you'll see if you, even if you hit the gym for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, once a week, you're doing your body a whole lot of good. That's, that's great facts to know because for sure, even getting to twice a week, I put it on my calendar and I say, I, I do it like it's my job every once in a while. I, I can't, do that second workout. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm okay. I remember what Fred said. Yeah. It's still really worthwhile. So um, yeah, that's real. And Fred, I'm going to have you, um, I'm going to take some of the questions that are over in the chat because um, this is really a, a lot of people's uh, question about this is I myself started out during the quarantine lockdown mm -hmm. and I did it all with resistance bands and handheld mm -hmm. weights and ankle weights that I tripled up so I could do the lateral raises to failure and I could do a really decent workout because mm -hmm. I was just starting out so this is what two and a half years ago right yeah. but I'm gonna say I did quickly out I'll just say outgrew my home gym yeah. um, and needed heavier weights. Yeah. But that's not to say that you can't do something like this with either the X bar or bands. If you can double up, triple up, keep increasing the resistance. So um, Fred, I'm going to pull up a here. Jennifer asks, would love to see a demo on hand weights, kettlebell, dumbbells. Would you happen? Uh, do you have any there or? Yeah, I mean, I can. Here, I will. I'll show you. Um, let me grab these two dumbbells. So these, these are actually from the 1940s. They're actually little bitty weights. But imagine that these weights are correct for the individual. So, as an example, let's say you were doing an exercise for the shoulders and the triceps. You would go zero, one, two. Three, four, five, six. Now, until you get to the top, and then slowly back down. And then you would just continue that until you got to the you couldn't continue. So now the, the key, though, is that you at home with, let's say, multiple different dumbbells mm -hmm. are keeping track. And if you're failing at... 90 seconds instead of 60 seconds, you really need to bump up the weight. So yeah. obviously then go to the next weight higher. Sometimes that's a little tough because you don't have small increments. You only have a certain amount of dumbbells. Right. Hence why I say you will typically then, fortunately, because it's showing you're getting stronger, but you're going to outgrow your home gym unless you they, figure out a different they method. They do make some dumbbells that are actually adjustable where you they have little pins you pull it yeah. out one pound you can add two pounds that they, they are they're yeah. expensive they're maybe like three hundred dollars or so yeah i had what last week on the live i demonstrated with one of those it's you dial the it's pretty cool you yeah, can dial right. the pounds at the end and then you pick it up and it right. is exactly yeah so 
Right. Yeah, that's what I used during during lockdown. But problem was when I was doing, let's say, squats and I needed to hold a really pretty heavy weight in order to fail yeah. at 60 to 90 seconds. Right. And then what happened was now it's so friggin bulky to hold, you know, 75 pounds and it becomes very cumbersome and it started hurting my hands. So I'm just saying that the, the goal is for you to outgrow your home gym, but for sure, if you're doing nothing now and you want to start this method and you have home, um, you know, workout equipment, then absolutely. This is a great, great way to start. Even if you're doing like, you know, the lateral raises, same thing. You're going to end up getting to the point. Remember always going slowly, but you're going to get to that point where all of a sudden you physically cannot lift up another inch and you're at that point i hold it i hold it i hold it i come back down and sometimes just because i'm a glutton for punishment i push out and i try to do it one more time just because it's kind of funny that i was going all the way up and now all of a sudden i literally can't move it and to me that's kind of like the money shot that's the spot where i'm like signaling i gotta start building muscle and i i really try to push it at that point even that doesn't feel great and i'm not having fun but I, I just keep thinking to myself, suck it up, buttercup. This is good for you. This is really, this is the way to get stronger and be strong yeah. for the rest of your life. It's essential. And well, in, <clears throat> in talking about that in my book uh, with the home program, I do mention that you can have uh, gallon water jugs. And what you can do is you put it on the scale, half a pound of water, you mark half pound. Then you mark one pound. You just keep adding water to your half pound, one pound, one and a half, two, two. And every time you can do the milk jugs, the exercises with the milk, with the um, water, the gallon water jugs, not milk jugs, um, you can then add a little water to each one. To the next mark. Make it a little heavier and just have yeah. little increments. So that's, that, it's, it's a little awkward, but it actually works pretty well. So there, that's another way that you can do it. Yeah, that's great. Um, I have another question here. Oh, and I, I wanted to say one more thing about the kettlebells. Uh, kettlebells are dumbbells with the handle on the top. There's nothing magic about a kettlebell. It's just the weight, a form of resistance, just like a dumbbell, a barbell, a weight machine. So the idea that kettlebells are some special device that will make you explosive and powerful and make you look like a CrossFit person it's complete nonsense. It's just well, yeah. it, especially for the point that typically you're herking and jerking and swinging with the kettlebell, yeah, for you. right? <laughs> exactly. But like what I do, because I happen to have some kettlebells and I incorporated that into my home quarantine gym, but mm -hmm. I would use the handle of the kettlebell and that's how I would do my tricep. Yeah, just like a dumbbell. That's yeah, right. just like a dumbbell. Uh, so somebody's uh, asking here, any way to incorporate bands? I don't have heavy weights. So, yeah, I mean, there's all different colors, different resistance, and you can double up, triple up on the bands. And again, the point of this is really figuring out what, for whatever exercise it is, using the resistance, whatever it is, to be enough that you are, with these slow motions, failing between 60 and 90 seconds. And again, if you're failing before 60 seconds, you've got to lighten it up a touch. Is that correct, Fred, right? You're yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if you're reaching momentary muscular success, which is failure success, yeah. in 50 seconds, I mean, that's okay. The, okay. the idea around 60 to 90 is that you don't have to use high resistance or heavy weights to get tremendous benefit out of strength training. You, you, and um, with the bands, the one problem with the bands is that a rubber band gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder as you stretch it. For some joint motions, that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. So for example, if you're doing a biceps curl with bands, as you're lifting, it's really easy here. But then as you get to here, where harder, you're getting much harder. weaker, it's, it's it's so hard, you can't finish it, that you have to use even easier bands to complete the full repetition. And what happens is that then that 
that really isn't sufficient. It's better than nothing, but it's not really sufficient to really get do the best job. So, so the best thing is probably pros and cons. To yeah, in, invest in one of those changeable weight. Um, it's much can, better to do that. Barbell yeah. sets, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you could answer in here this question says, this is a great workout method for many people. I have to ask about type two muscle fiber growth though. As I understand it, only explosive movements build those fibers, correct? Ooh, ooh I can answer that, ooh, ooh. I'll pick on you, Fred. <laughs> All right, so in exercise physiology, they have a concept called Henneman size principle. Henneman size principle states that muscles are recruited in order of their size from smallest to largest. So when you hear the term slow twitch muscle fiber and the term fast twitch muscle fiber, many exercise physiologists and well-meaning trainers think that that means slow twitch means activated when moving slowly, fast twitch only activated when moving fast. Slow twitch and fast twitch do not refer to the speed of contraction of the fiber. It refers to the fatigue characteristics of the fiber. A slow twitch muscle fiber is slow to fatigue. It's oxidative. It's like the marathon runner. The fast twitch muscle fiber fatigues rapidly. They're like the guys with the battle ax and they have like one swing and then they're out. Henneman size principle states that as you're doing your repetitions, in the beginning, when it's relatively easy, you're only using the slow twitch muscle fibers. Whether you're lifting like this or lifting like this. Once you get to the point where the exercise is getting difficult, you're now using both the slow twitch and the intermediate twitch fibers. Only when you get to the point where the exercise is virtually impossible are you using all of the muscle fibers from slow to fast. The speed of the contraction has nothing to do with it. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world. When he runs the 100-yard dash, is he using some of his fast twitch muscle fibers? Yes. But before he runs the race, put a 300-pound weighted vest on him and now ask him to run as fast as he can. In order for him to run as fast as he can with a 300-pound weighted vest on him, he has to use far more muscle fibers. He'll, of course, move more slowly, but he's going to be using a much wider array of his fast twitch muscle fibers in order to make that movement happen. So Henneman size principle is nothing you get to vote on. It, it is a fact of physiology. So once you're doing a slow set of exercises to muscle fatigue success, you've recruited all the muscle fibers. And then you just move on to the next exercise. Yeah, it's almost like a, an unfortunate misnomer of naming them. They should name them A twitch, B twitch, and C twitch fibers. And then there wouldn't be this thought process that you're, you know, it's related to the speed of the movement of the muscle. Right, not at all. Yeah, so we have a compliment here that you, Fred Hahn, and Dr. Ben have saved and redefined strength training for people over 50. Oh, well, <laughs> well I, I will say this. Dr. Ben is my mentor, and uh, he has been doing this. Uh, he had a big gym out in Staten Island back in the 60s. He was Arthur Jones, the guy who invented Nautilus and who also invented Medex. He was one of Arthur Jones's right-hand men. Not only is he brilliant, but he's like the kindest, most generous guy as well. So I got to give Dr. Ben the credit. I learned much from much from him. But yeah, I mean, we've uh, uh, I've tried to popularize it. I've tried to get it into the mainstream because this, especially for seniors. God, can you imagine if all senior homes had a slow burn? That doesn't have to be my way. Just a slow tempo strength training program once or twice a week. The, the, the benefit to those people would be staggering, staggering. Yeah, I'm going to pull over another question here. How much weight do you start out with? And the, the interesting thing is when I first shifted from my home setup to upgrading to the gym, it was a little tough 
the first couple workouts because I had to, I literally had a 90 second timer on my phone that I kept hitting and I would take a note and say, um, chest press 45 perfect or 42 light, try 50 next time. I literally, for the first couple of times it did, it was a little cumbersome, unless you're going to work out with somebody like Fred, who's going to note all that stuff for you and do it for you. You do have to, yeah, yeah, you have to figure out the the question is how much weight it's the amount of weight that's going to cause you to reach muscular success, Mm -hmm. (laughs) failure, (laughs) intensity at the 60 to 90 second point. So if you're still pumping away at two minutes, you're like, oops, pick a heavy enough weight. If you're really struggling at 40 seconds, too heavy. So that's where you have to figure out for yourself. Right. And if you want to think about it, if you choose to think about it in terms of the number of repetitions, if you're lifting the resistance, let's say you're lifting it in five to 10 seconds and lowering it in five to 10 seconds, the resistance that you choose should at least allow you to do three. And if you can get to seven or eight, then you need to find some way to just up the ante a little bit. Well, good. That's that's actually something kind of a good guidance instead of having to sit there with the timer. But if you use three is your, your, your weight's too heavy. If you can only do three and reach failure at three. And if you've already gotten to seven or eight, then you're going to have to think about bumping it up next time. And that's the really cool thing about this workout is that as time goes on, it's like, Ooh, look at me at 90 seconds, I'm still going. And I used to fail at 60. And I know um, I had heard in the past, you say, Fred, about the, um, yeah, like, increasing like a pound, a pound and a half increment. Like if you're at 90, go ahead and bump it the next time to try to, but unfortunately where I'm at the gym, sometimes it's just a five pound difference and it's a little bit tough to do that. That's the, let me show you something. Yeah. 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 These can be purchased online. This is a quarter of a pound. This is a half pound. Yeah. And they make them magnetic as well. So if you have dumbbells or if depending on what you're using, if you're in the gym with machines or what, whatever it is you're doing. Put it right on top of the, yeah. the weights. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. I could just carry that around in my gym bag as an extra workout. <laughs> They're called micro plates. Micro plates. Okay, cool. I'll, um, I will put a link to that in the, into the description after the show in case, because I'm going to look it up. And um, we we use that all the time when people, I mean, eventually as you strength train, after about the first six months, you're going to get quite strong. After about the first year of consistent training, you're, you're starting to get about as strong as you're ever going to get. After two years of consistent strength training, probably eating right, sleeping well, there's a lot of other factors, but assuming most of what you're doing is, is good. After about two years of consistent strength training, that's about it. And now what you want to do is maintain that level of strength. So, for example, I'll have clients that have been with me for a couple of years, and they'll do five repetitions with 100 pounds. I give them 100 pounds again, they get five repetitions. 100 pounds again, they get five repetitions. 100 pounds again, they get five repetitions. 100 pounds again, they get seven. So it takes a month or so until that adaptation occurs. And then what I'll do is I'll just add that. And so just little by little by little, bring them to their genetic potential. And then you want to maintain that till you're 116 years old. Exactly. That's why I tell people, I said, this is for the rest of your life. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We don't want sarcopenia. We don't want osteoporosis. This is going to help every aspect of your life for balance, to not fall as we get older, so many different aspects. And to be able to do what you want to do, go on a hike, go fight, go, you know, whatever it is, it's it's going to help. Yeah. Yeah. And And there's actually research to show that, especially in seniors, resistance training improves cognitive function, mood, uh, depression, not to mention all the other uh, uh, physiological benefits like improved blood pressure, 
HDL cholesterol, testosterone levels. Um, that it's, strength training is not just like for building muscles. That's just one small part of it. There are so many other physiological benefits that resistance training can bestow that um, it's like eating healthfully for the rest of your life. It's something that you must do for the rest of your life. Yeah, and that's why I'm so grateful I found one that's not so cumbersome to my routine. And yeah. it, like I said, it is intense. And for a few of my uh, people who have come along with me, I had a couple followers out here for my carnivore boot camp last summer, and they were blown away. Like, wow, that's some workout. And that's it's it's so good because you walk away saying, I really I, I accomplished something. All right, we well, have yeah. a couple. And I, I wanted to say also, it, if you like yoga, it's going to make your yoga positions better. If you do Pilates, you're going to do better. Anything that you like to do, swim, run, bike, lift up your grandkids, put the luggage in the overhead bin in the airplane, all of that gets better. Absolutely. Every, everything. So this question here is, when you say Dr. Ben, are you talking about Dr. Ben Bickman. No, it's Dr. Oh. Ben Bacchio. Yeah, Dr. Right? Ben Bacchio. I mean, uh, Ben Bickman is brilliant. I mean, I I think yeah. the work that he does is astounding. I, I, I'm yeah. a great admirer of Dr. Bickman. Uh, but uh, no, we're talking about Dr. Ben Bacchio. He calls himself yeah. Dr. Ben. Yeah, yeah Dr. Ben. Ben Bo. Um, okay, so here's, let's see. So we don't repeat the same muscle after reaching failure. Nope. We well, do not repeat the same muscle, I mean, the same exercise. That's right. right. Yeah. You might, if you do an exercise, say, for your back muscles you and you reach failure, and you get might, yeah, you might then go to another exercise to strengthen the upper back muscles that have a little bit of overlap on the same muscles but like, as Dr. Lisa said, it's, you don't have to do the same exercise again. Right. right. And I had somebody uh, here says, can Fred go through examples of the six to 10 exercises that would cover the whole body? So, I mean, I, let me just say for, for, for what I do and what my thought process is, you want to push and a pull exercise really for all your major muscle groups. So I, you know, but as I'm going around the gym, there's, and somebody else asked in here, and I'm going to ask it, uh, answer that too. It says, how do you do your abs this way? I actually do. I know, Fred, I, I've, I've heard that you're really kind of getting your abs in every exercise you do, because you're, you're really tightening your core when you're doing these things. I, also add in one ab exercise in each of my workouts because I, of course, have that mindset like, well, once the body fat percentage gets low enough, I want to be able to see the, those abs and yeah. really strengthen them. But there's, there's uh, at least at Planet Fitness, there's got to be six different ab machines. Wow. So I yeah. literally, I just pick one that doesn't have somebody else's ass sitting in it at the time. And I go and do that one as my ab movement of the day. There's one that it has these like nice rubber handles that come over your shoulders. You just grab it and then you're doing a crunch because you set the weight, the pin goes in. Now I do the same way that Fred's demonstrating. The first inch is about two to three seconds and then about a second per inch. And I'm going down to the bottom. I hold it for a second and the same thing slowly back up. And I'm going to tell you, Again, I am picking a weight where I am literally getting to muscular success mm -hmm. at about 60 to 90 seconds. So, yeah. And to answer Ginny's question a little more specifically. So when we say abs, we then have to think of function. And so what the rectus abdominis, the abdominal muscles do is they flex the spine. So they bring the sternum down to the pubic symphysis. So it's spinal flexion. The abdominals also rotate the spine as well. So when you're thinking abdominals, the abdominal muscles have a function just like your biceps, elbow flexion, your triceps extension. So it doesn't really matter 
what muscle or muscle group you're using, you would do it in the exact same way. Yeah. And there again, in those five to six various machines at Planet Fitness, there's one where you have your, your knees on a pad and you're actually twisting. You can't really see me here, but you're actually getting your, your obliques. Um, and, yeah, there's all sorts of different. That's why I kind of purposely just pick a different ab machine. A lot of times you'll see me post on Instagram. I do the one where I look like I'm in a jet pack. You know, you're on this thing and then you're just lifting your legs into. Yeah. Uh, now that is a hip flexion exercise. So if you're doing an exercise where you're lifting the hip up like this, like you have uh -huh. your legs here and your legs are down, then you're lifting up like this. That's working your rectus femoris. That's working the hip flexors. And you're tightening the abdominals, but the main function of the abdominal muscles is to flex the spine. So you want to pick a machine, if you can find one, that causes spinal flexion. Yeah, like that machine I just told them about with the, right. the thing that comes right. over. I'm literally, right. it's kind of like doing a crunch in a machine, which is great. Or, you know, you could get on the floor and do. Yeah, I have it in my book right now. Yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways, but you know, Ginny more an answer to your question. It's like, you know, you're, you're doing your biceps, your triceps, I'm doing a pull down. And actually, since we're on that subject, Fred, why don't you critique since I went through the effort to try to do this here. Okay. Um, I have a video up here of me at the gym the other day okay. yeah, and no. So this is the, the machine that I usually do for my um, pull exercise. But then there's also, a, so if this one's okay. taken, I'll go to an, the other machine where I'm sitting down and I'm grabbing the bar and pulling it down. Well, in, um, in, in looking at the motion you're doing here, so the muscles you're working there are the biceps and the lats primarily. Um, some of the rhomboids, but notice how your palms are facing away from you. So you're putting your biceps and forearms in an unfavorable position. You're better off doing that exercise Turned with around. your palms facing you. Okay. So that your biceps and your forearms in it are in a, because with your arm this way, you're twisting the arm and making it much more difficult for the biceps to do their work. So they'll fail faster, not giving your lats really like the, the work they really need. So you're better off with the palms facing. More facing. of a chin up instead if of you a can do that, It's hard to see. Yeah. But your speed is excellent. Yeah. And so part of, so that's an assisted, like suppose you're supposed to learn how to be able to work your way to be able to do a pull up with this assisted pull up machine. But for me, it ends up being a great exercise just to um, reach yeah. failure. Um, and I just, I now, because I worked out so consistently for so long, I pretty much have memorized the weight for each of the machines. So uh, let me get that one off. And then I will put up this one. So I know I definitely picked, uh, let me see. If mm -hmm. So that's a compound row. So yeah. that's, that's going to work the muscles of your lats, your rhomboids, your posterior deltoid. So that's more of an what we would call an upper back exercise, which is a great exercise to do for sure. Yeah. So I, I keep my back straight and I am just concentrating on making sure I do the motion slow yeah. enough because it's yeah. time you under tension. Your elbows in, that's good. You don't want to you don't want to do the row and pull and splay your elbows out. Uh, you yeah. want to keep them tight inside so you get the full range of motion. Sometimes I admit I forget to breathe and I have this voice in my head pretending like I've got Fred out there saying, got to breathe, got to breathe. Don't hold your breath. Well, all around the gym we have, where is it? See? Oh yeah. So what does that say? Start slowly, two seconds for the first inch, breathe freely and continuously, stay focused on your muscles and your instructor. 
So all around the gym, in front of virtually every machine, we have a, a placard that reminds people. So. Yeah, it's imp it's important. It, it really is just the the technique and making sure that you are really concentrating. And you know what? It's so it's so intense, but it's such a short period of time, and it's pretty repetitive. You know what you're doing. You just get to the next machine, set the weight, and start slow. Just keep remembering the one of the biggest things for me that I messed up a lot at the beginning was not taking the two to three seconds to move that first inch. And I would just kind of out of the gates, just start cranking it. And then it is really important because I can tell the difference when I do that first mm -hmm. inch much slower. Right. And the nice thing about that is if you are, if you do have some sort of injury, like a bad shoulder or a tennis elbow or when you start that slowly, if you start to feel something that's not right, you, you, you can stop. If you start quickly, it may be too late. Yeah. Now, and I, I had uh, rotator cuff surgery three years ago in my one arm, and I have a torn rotator cuff in my other. I, it was a gymnast long time ago, but then I also played a lot of tennis and I had a bone spur that actually sliced my rotator cuff, but I don't want to get surgery on the second one. And I've been rehabbing it really well, but I'm going to tell you, I am so cautious on, and I use really light weights because I don't have the strength to do this motion when I'm pushing it upward. Okay. And I'm just very slow and cautious. And as soon as, if I feel a twinge of a pain, I just slowly come back down and I move on to the next one. So, right. oh, yeah. So that's why I feel like it's so, like safe, so safe to work out this way. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was going to do, uh, let me pull up. Fred, you have some awesome uh, Instagram posts. So anybody who doesn't follow Fred, Right here, uh, Slow Burn Personal Training Studios, Frederick Hahn is his Instagram. So we're going to go through some of these because um, they're they're really, really beneficial to uh, refresh uh, our thought process on all this. But here, 30 minutes of strength training one time a week will produce good results. Twice a week, better results. Three times a week will not produce even better results. Virtually so nothing at all. Yeah, so it's, it's just a waste of time. You're better off spending that time like learning a foreign language. <laughs> yeah, so it was interesting. Somebody had uh, put over in the question. So they said, so we should work out and then two days off and then work out again and then two days off. To me, after hearing those statistics, I'm like, mm, no, you should work out twice a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you really love the gym or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in all my years of doing this with people, except for uh, very elderly, weak, out of shape people, I have never seen once a week work better than twice, ever. And when I say, and at, so how do I see that? Well, I keep track of people's strength records, and we also test their body composition on our in-body machine. So I know for a fact whether or not once or twice is working better. And it's okay. It's, it's anecdotal. It's not an RCT, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, when strength training, you're not in the gym to lift weights. You're in the gym to fatigue muscle tissue deeply, safely, and time efficiently. So yeah, it's just it's like we were saying, it really is the time under tension and the, the benefit of the muscle yeah. growth. Right. This isn't power lifting. It isn't Olympic lifting. It isn't CrossFit. Those things are recreational sporting activities that have nothing to do with proper resistance training. Yeah, we're going to get to that because I know you have one of one of these that I put up here is regarding that. When doing strength training exercise, do your best to reach the point of momentary muscular fatigue, which we call muscular success. Why? Because we're successfully recruiting all of the available muscle fibers. Right. Yeah. Well, but that goes back to Henneman's size principle. Yep. Yeah. All right. Here. This is the what I consider 
what the CrossFit <laughs> little post here, there's absolutely no benefit to lifting weights explosively. It's dangerous and completely unnecessary. You'll achieve nothing positive from doing so unless <laughs> you enjoy injury. Um, yeah. When I see people post uh, a lot of that CrossFit stuff with the lift and, and like, I'm, I'm just, I just think about discs, herniation, oh, back yeah. injuries, shoulder in injuries, and, there's so much information about how um, that, the, that, that sport, we'll call it a sport, right? <laughs> yeah, and the marketing of it, you know, you see all of these warrior men and women, little do most people know is that most of those people are using anabolic steroids. Most of those people are injured all the time. They're injured all the time. So it, it isn't going to give you, like doing CrossFit isn't going to give you a CrossFit body. It's gonna, you're gonna wind up having an injured body is what will actually happen. And then you'll be out of lifting for quite a while and end up right. having muscle wasting. So yeah, all right. Always increase the resistance if your time to complete muscle fatigues between 70 to 90 seconds. This is what we were talking about before, what I was saying. Increase just that little half pound to just keep bumping it up so that you are increasingly um, stressing your muscles. Yeah, and I, I, I made a mistake there. It sh I should have said it should say 60 to 90 seconds. So if you're doing an exercise and you get 60 seconds and you leave the weight the same, the next time you get 74 seconds, definitely increase the resistance. To go try to get it back down to 60. Yeah. Right? Okay. Just a little bit. okay. When lifting, lowering the weight very slowly is extremely important. Lowering it very slowly creates more actin and myosin cross bridging, which is superior for muscular growth. And to be safe, lift the weight very slowly as well. Two seconds for the first inch and an inch per second after that. So that's really just reiterating what we've been talking about, that it's so important. That's the key. And it's interesting because at, at first, it you'll see when you're at the gym doing this, and not that I really pay attention and nobody's paying attention to you either, but it's right. very interesting to see people doing this and especially the ones that are doing this where they're right. getting their body motion in it to get the weight going with momentum and then here i am here i am here's lisa just hanging out <laughs> doing her thing and i feel so good though because i am i i i feel the intensity of it i'm not gonna say i'm in pain but damn <laughs> that leg press machine gets me every time <laughs> yeah and i like to say to people that the when you're lifting weights slowly the, me the mechanical work is unremarkable because it looks it's like watching water boil. But the metabolic work that's going on with inside of you is massive. So, you know, can't judge a book by its cover. No, it's 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 so good. I I keep trying to like I, I I'm a broken record sometimes in my group coaching and I I'm just so emphatic about trying to get everybody to start lifting if they're not because many many are not because they say oh yeah i don't know anything about the gym i've never gone to the gym i'm not a gym rat i don't know what i'm doing and i'm like you don't have to know what you're doing <laughs> it's like you just get in there and just and i i say the rules i say move slowly pick a weight that you fail 60 to 90 do one set and move to the next machine just start right. and don't, start. Let it, don't let it overwhelm you it's actually, yeah. although the work is, is challenging, it's actually, it's actually, the doing of it is actually much simpler than you think. Yeah, that's, that's why partly why I really want to put these videos out for people who are just still on the edge and not ready to take the leap. And I go, no, you have to, you really have to do this. All right, carbohydrate doesn't build muscle tissue. It simply forces excess blood glucose via water into the muscles, protein oh. built muscle. To build muscle, focus on getting adequate protein, forget about carbs. Yeah. yeah. So too many bodybuilders who are who are innocently ignorant of nutrition, nutritional principles, believe that you gotta carb up in order to build muscle tissue. But carbohydrates, 
car, do not build m muscle itself. They do not build the tissue itself. They simply put water. So in order for excess sugar to get into your muscle cell, it needs an Uber cab and the Uber cab is water. So that's why when like if, if you're on a very low carbohydrate diet and one day you're like, ah, screw this and you have a gluten free pizza, you will literally feel your muscles swell up. And you're like, whoa, what is this? And that's just water going into your muscles. It's not you didn't build muscle. So it, and it's very important for the typical person to eat adequate protein. And most people don't. You really need to eat about a gram to a gram and a half of protein per pound of lean body weight, not body weight, lean body weight. Yeah. So what you're, um, well, you would get that from doing an in body, right? <laughs> you get that. Yeah. Or like if you, if you know that, let's say you, let's say you weigh 160 pounds and you know that you should weigh 125, then try to get 125 grams of carbohydrate, uh, of protein, protein. And just shoot for that. And then at least you'll be on the right track. Yeah, definitely. That's what I have most people start at as their first uh, attempt at figuring it out. Multiple sets of the same exercise do not produce better results. Save your energy for the next exercise, which is perfect. It's like, yeah, to have, doing two, three, four sets is not producing a better muscle gain. Yeah, and this isn't just you know, Lisa, in my opinion, this is what the research of, I don't know how many different 60 some odd studies comparing multiple sets to single sets of the same exercise, especially when the exercise is taken to momentary muscular success. There is, there is not, there is one study and one study alone uh, that showed a slight benefit to multiple sets, but the, the vast majority of the research on it shows absolutely no difference. And I'll put this question up here now. Louisa says, do you take a break in between each exercise? So Fred, I'll let you answer that because I'm going to tell you what I do. Yeah. So the, uh, uh, there's, a, there's an idea that if you go from exercise to exercise to exercise to exercise, your heart rate gets up and you keep your heart rate up like as if you're doing your aerobics. But, but the, the, the aerobic cardiovascular endurance, wind, stamina, whatever you want to call it, benefits of yeah. resistance training comes from the, in, the proliferation, the increase of the mitochondria within the muscle tissue. It's not from going bop, 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 each from machine to machine. So if you're in an exercise machine and you work to momentary muscular failure and you're breathing really hard, it's perfectly okay to let your heart rate drop down a little bit so that you don't get gas on the next exercise where you don't even reach muscle failure. You just can't breathe. And as you get in better shape, it gets better and better, but you, you do absolutely do not have to rush from machine to machine. Yeah. And or exercise. To exercise. Right. And pretty much what I do is I finish, I'm at muscular failure, slowly letting it back down, getting up from the machine, grabbing my phone off the top, I'm looking where the next one I'm going to. I'm walking yeah. over to that one. I'm setting the pin in right. and I'm setting my seat height because there's little adjustments for lots of different things. Sometimes like the leg extension machine, you you set the, the pad that's going to be at the top of your ankle. You're setting all sorts of different things. So by then I'm like, yeah, you're ready all right, go. I'm go. I just yeah. go. So and heck, I got to get this workout done in 30 minutes. <laughs> So, all right, let me pull that off. Hang on a second. Um, all right. When you're strength training intensely and you hear that voice in your mind say, that's it, last rep, just can't do another, that's the signal that you have one more rep left inside you. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> That's what I say in my head. I say, I say, even when I'm, when I know, like sometimes I'll, I'll muscle through and actually get that last rep in. And I know for sure I'm not doing another full one, but sure as heck, I'm still slow down and back up, back up, pull, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Mm. 
And sometimes if I'm really like in, in the mood, I'll let it down and I will come back up. And that last, very, very last one, I try to do it as fast as I can, which is hysterical because I'm probably doing like a half inch a second to try to move it. But yeah. 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 And that's a, one thing I want to say about that. I see this with new clients also. Let's say you're doing the exercise and you do one real slow and you're on your fourth one and you can't, you get it about halfway and you're really trying, really trying and you can't complete it. Don't just drop it. You still have work to do. So let's say you absolutely cannot finish it. Then slowly reverse it. You're still exercising. Don't waste that last lowering effort. Yeah, and the, the temptation is you've reached muscular success, right. muscular failure. You've reached it, and that's the culmination of that test, you know, that, that set. Mm -hmm. And the, the inclination is to just, okay, I'm done. Let it down. But Nope, that's the point where you're like, all right, just Got a baby, little more it to down, do. baby it down. And uh, yeah, then then you're then you're done. Right. Okay, when strength training, always try to work the larger muscles before the smaller. If you work the smaller first, you'll not give the larger a fighting chance to deeply fatigue. So as an example with that, let's say you want to work your back and your biceps. You don't want to do a biceps curl exercise and fatigue your biceps and then do the chin up because now your biceps are fried. Fried. Your, yeah. The much larger muscles of your back, your lats, are going to go, hey, what's going on? What about us? So you're better off doing it the opposite. You're better off doing the chin up or the pull down and then go to the biceps. All right, I'm gonna go over here and pull a question over from Bevy Girl. So when doing squats, do the squats slowly also? Yeah, there we is do no exercise that you should do fast. Yep, we wanna do everything slowly and more, more time under tension is what's going to fatigue the muscle and trigger your muscle to get stronger. So, and then, so when you're talking about squats, Bevy, I'm assuming you're talking about your home workout, your home gym, and you're using squats. But yeah, you don't want to, we're not doing squats like this, like so many people do, right? That's that's the way people say, oh, I'm getting my 100 squats in today. And they bang out 25. And then a few hours later, they set their alarm, they bang out 25. And they're doing this. But you know what? If they had done one set with a 50-pound weight in their hand and did it this method, you oh, wouldn't have oh, to. Whatever's do. appropriate for them, yeah. 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 That, that's well, for me, yeah, it was like, I, I, I know I got to hold a pretty big weight. I mean, even body weight squats. If you just grab a, and it's in my book. If you just grab a door, grab the doorknob and just very slowly lower your body weight down to where your hips are close to your heels and then very slowly press yourself back up just with your own body weight. That can be very challenging for many people. Absolutely. And you, you will definitely reach muscular success uh, doing that exercise. So, yeah. All right. Um, let's go on to the next one here. The secret to health, lift weights safely, eat adequate protein daily, eliminate sugar and alcohol and carbs <laughs> permanently. <Yeah. laughs> I should have said sugar and parenthetics carbs. Yeah, sugar slash carb slash processed foods. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people will say, what, Fred, I can't have a salad. It's like, well, of course you can. Th those, those aren't the carbohydrates that we're, that we're really talking about. The kind of carbohydrates we're talking about is potatoes and rice and pasta, starches, beer, which is just liquid bread. Um, those are the kinds of carbohydrates you want to avoid. So, yeah, if you're having a big steak, and you have a, a salad with greens that you like and some dressing on it. What I tell clients is eat the steak first, finish the steak. And then if you're still hungry and you want to dabble in the salad, go ahead, eat the salad, enjoy yourself. Or if you're carnivore like us, you don't bother buying the salad and no. having to throw it out when the leaves are wilted. No. Uh, me no like plant matter. Yeah, we don't need plants. There is no such thing as spot reduction. In other words, you can't lose body fat from a particular area. If you're eating healthily, your body will gobble up body fat from wherever it chooses to do so. 
Doing a thousand crunches will not burn fat off your belly. Doing a thousand leg lifts will not burn fat off your butt. I totally agree with that. But it is all a matter of less energy coming in, more energy going out to drop the fat off, and then you'll be able to see those muscles. Yeah, you, you just have to be patient. I've, I've had clients who they lost, let's say they needed to lose 60 pounds of fat, and they lose the first 10 to 15 pounds of fat, and their rings don't fit. Their shoes don't fit. But they're still just as fat in the belly as they were. Sometimes it's the opposite. Some people lose a lot of fat around their belly, but they have fat around their neck, and that fat around their neck doesn't go until the till the end. It, there's just no rhyme, no reason to it. Everybody, it's just everybody yeah. loses fat and builds muscle differently. And we don't have control over it. That's no the bottom control. line. All right, the three keys to fat loss. I added this little over on the side here: nutrition, caloric energy deficit, sleep, and resistance training. The, the total keys to fat loss right there. It's easier yeah. and more enjoyable than you've been led to believe. Yeah. Now, the one thing I will say about that is I have I have trained, I don't know, without exaggerating, a few dozen uh, clients, and I have to say it's usually women, who when I look at what they eat, the amount of protein they're eating is like a chicken leg. They wake up in the morning, they have a cup of coffee, and then they have a, like some kind of salad. And then for dinner, they have like a chicken leg with uh, like a potato. For those people, they are in such an energy deficit. Their body is eating itself up alive. So it's eating up its own muscle tissue to make up for the shortfall in the amino acids that they're not eating. So in some instances, I have to get women and men, but usually women, to eat much more food than they're eating when then they're eating at the beginning of the program in order for them to build up their muscle, build up their bone and also lose body fat. Because without the increase in muscle and an increase in the metabolism, um, you, you, you know, as I say to people, we, we don't have a weight loss program. We have a fat loss program. And if you're a woman and you weigh 140 pounds and I take 10 pounds of fat off of you and put 10 pounds of muscle on you, you still weigh the same, but you look completely different. With a different clothes size. Yeah. So so in some instances, uh, uh, I've had to significantly increase uh, the calories. Well, that's eat. somebody who's so, so under eating protein. Right. And yeah, so it's that's, that's the one thing that's so key that I always talk about is that we should be keeping our protein on our Aside from our days where we do some challenges to try to get our metabolism shaken up a bit and drop weight, but protein is so important. Really. So important. All right. And we're going to end with this one, your 10 commandments of weightlifting. Thou shalt place no other exercises before lifting. Lifting is so important. Like you said, the other things are like for fun and entertainment. If you want to go chill out with your CrossFit buddies. Right, right. Uh, and your lifting is going to make all those things better. Yeah, thou shalt lift and lower slowly, lift and lower to failure, lift two times a week only, honor thy lifting partner, me, myself, and I, but <laughs> not lift very heavy or very light weights and record your progress and not, per not perform multiple sets of the same exercise and not covet another's body. But, okay, yeah, so the such a great... Wow. Yeah, great. Pay attention to what you want. Forget about that guy, that gal. They are of no consequence. And here we go. You can be very over fat and exercise every day. You can be very lean and not exercise at all. Right. All that, right. That makes sense to everybody. It's uh, your 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 body composition, how much fat you have, and how much muscle you can gain has everything to do with how you eat. Some people say, well, you know, fat loss is 80% uh, diet and 20% exercise. No, it's not. It's 100% nutrition. So 
even though you're strength training twice a week and you're building muscle and you're burning calories, don't even consider that part of your fat loss program. Pay attention to what's in your refrigerator, what's in your cabinets. Yeah, that's the old saying, abs are made in the kitchen, not in the gym. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So thank or, you so or much. visible abs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining in tonight, Fred. I really appreciate it. I think this has been so beneficial for so many people that have so many questions. And um, I will hopefully, the plan is, Fred has invited me up to his um, one of his gyms and will do a video and put me through a, a workout. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, if, I didn't, if we didn't answer the questions, feel free to email me um, and I'll, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah. And I have, let's see, I have on here, we'll put on, you can follow Fred at Frederick Hahn on Instagram. You're so good at this, Lisa. I, I, boy, I went into a big crash course between last <laughs> Tuesday and tonight, Fred, just cause I wanted to make sure I could get you on. And then I'm going to go here with this. Actually, it's F Han at, at uh, slowburnfitness.com. That's right. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. I said here to train with Fred in either New Jersey location or in Manhattan. There's his um, contact information there. So, um, and I'll also put everything down in the notes. But thank you so much. This has been great. And we'll have to thank set you. up when I can come up and uh, work out with you. It'd be awesome. All right. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Okay. Take care, everyone.